Welcome to Sydney Olympic Park and it's a very special occasion, the final of the Men's Australian Hockey League for 2011. Living Sport Media is proud to be bringing you this gold medal clash between the hometown New South Wales Waratahs and the smoke-free West Australian Thundersticks. My name's Paul Economides, joining me in commentary will be Aaron McCarthy. Aaron, in your 10-year AHL career, you would have been preparing for a gold medal game. How will the players now be coping with the nerves in the change room? Well, nervousness is always a, a big uh, factor in, in your game performance. Obviously, some, some people have different routines before a match, so they, uh, they'll all be preparing in their own different way, but uh, they all have their own routines to, to go through today, um, especially with uh, the team meetings, and uh, it's, it's hard to get nervous sometimes with all the, the action going on, but uh, they'll definitely be using it to their advantage, especially when you get to this level, they, they do use it uh, to their, to their, for their benefit. So. And uh, earlier this week, Aaron, we saw Western Australia defeat New South Wales 4-2 and they didn't really seem troubled at all. What will the Waratahs have to do to turn things around today? Well, I think for the Waratahs, they have such a potent attack. So I, I feel that they, they should go forward today and not be scared to, to give them a real red-hot go in the, in the circle and, and try and dominate their 25. I, I think that's where the difference in the, in the game will be today compared to the, uh, the, the first round match they had. So. Well, hopefully we'll see a lot of goals today. There's been plenty of goals scored this tournament. We spoke to the coaches before the game to get their thoughts. Chris, congratulations on the team reaching the final. How are they holding up physically after a tough week? Um, yeah, the guys are, are, uh, are pretty good at the moment. I uh, had a few injury concerns throughout the week. Uh, Brent Dancer had a bit of a, a back injury um, and we lost Bevan George with a, uh, with a knee injury. Uh, but fortunately um, we've had Fergus Kavanagh come back from Europe um, to obviously play in today's game and tomorrow's final. So all in all we're looking pretty good. And mentally, how are you going to get the boys up and ready for the final after a tough game against Victoria? Um, mentally, I, I don't think it's a, it's a big issue um, with the team that we have. We've got a fair bit of experience that they've uh, played final series before and also the calibre of guys that we have. I think we have seven in the Australian squad, so um, the professionalism of these boys is, is, um, you know, is really good. You're facing the Waratahs from New South Wales. You had a comfortable 4-2 victory over them in the round games. What do you expect from them differently in the final? Um, I think that they're going to come out a lot harder, um, but in, in saying that, I mean, I guess so are we. Um, it's a final, um, you know, no holds bar, and should be a very attacking game, I'd say. And who are their key players that you'll need to keep under control? Um, I'd say uh, Matthew Butterini, Simon Orchard, and, you know, obviously Brent Livermore, who's, who controls the back and the flow going forward. Um, you know, if we can sort of, you know... Uh, I wouldn't say shut down, but sort of control their play a little bit. Um, it would be an advantage for us going forward into attack. And finally, Chris, what have been the main factors for the Thundersticks in reaching the final? Um, you know, it's once again just the team unity that, that we have amongst the group. Um, they've been together for a while now. And, you know, as, as, I, as I mentioned before, just the professionalism of the team, um, you know, holds us in good stead, I hope, for the final. Larry, congratulations on reaching the final. You would have been very pleased with the 4-0 victory over Queensland. Uh, the boys obviously had a big task ahead of them in that game. How have you gone getting the guys ready for today's final? Oh, yesterday was a very pleasing result and uh, the confidence that was gained from yesterday's game was very pleasing and uh, we regrouped last night and uh, we're looking for the same performance today but looking for that little bit extra. It's been a gruelling campaign. How are the team shaping up physically? Uh, coming together at the right end, uh, obviously the national boys returned from Europe, uh, it took them a while to just sort of recover from a long trip through Europe. Uh, not too many injuries, uh, they've been well managed and uh, today we've got all boys on, on deck to be uh, out there performing. And during the round games, uh, the Thundersticks defeated the Waratahs 4-2, what will you need to do differently uh, in the final? Uh, obviously they've got some areas that we're focusing on today and uh, we just need to be on our game and handle the ball very well, especially under pressure and capitalise on every opportunity at the scoring end and uh, if we do those things clinically well today uh, we're in with a very good show. And who are the key players for the Thundersticks that you'll need to keep quiet? Uh, they've got good players around the pitch obviously and uh, they're very good in areas, uh, out, out of the back, they're good up front and they've got a very good midfield as well so uh, we need to combat that and uh, we'll be looking, working very hard to over, overpower those areas. Well it looks like both teams will be relying on the wealth of experience at their disposal as you'd expect for a game of this magnitude. Aaron, I'm going to put you on the spot for a tip here. 
despite that maroon blood flowing through your veins, is there any chance you can predict a New South Wales victory? Uh, not today, Paul. Um, I, I just feel with uh, the ex finals experience that WA have and their composure and their 25 defensively, I just got a feeling they're going to get over New South Wales today because of that reason. I mean, both teams are very potent in attack, so uh, it's going to be an exciting game, but WA will be definitely uh, um, the winners today, I feel. So, unfortunately for you, Paul? Well, I'll be going for a Waratahs victory. They seemed a little bit slow off the mark at the start of this week, but they've certainly found their attacking prowess in the circle. There's that plus the fact that most of these players experienced a losing grand final last year, so I think that will provide enough motivation for them to win the gold medal. Whatever the result, it's going to be a fantastic game. We hope you enjoy the action. We certainly will enjoy bringing it to you. Out of the team lineups, firstly, New South Wales Waratahs. In goals, Daniel McPherson, Josh Miller, Simon Orchard, David Collins, Matthew Phillips, Adam Ema, Matt Butterini, Mark Patterson, Matthew Willis, Matthew Walk, Tristan White, Duncan Pearce, Tom Lobsey, Ian Patterson, Josh White, and the captain, Brent Livermore. Team coach by Larry McIntosh. Not playing today's game, Nathan Aykroyd, the reserve keeper, and Robbie Green who was injured earlier in the week. Over to the Thundersticks, we have Sam Pike, Matthew Boyce, Brent Dancer, Mark Boyne, in goals Tristan Clemens, the captain Fergus Kavanagh, Daniel Sampi, Chris Bowser, Aaron Zalewski, Ian Bircher, Trent Mitten, Craig Boyne, Alastair Park, John O'Charlesworth, Andrew Jacobs, Kyle Brown, coached by Chris O'Reilly, not playing today, Bevan George, who injured his knee earlier in the week, and the reserve goalkeeper, Tyler LaBelle. Crossing to the coin toss with the Manly Junior, flipping the coin there. Uh, the umpires for today are Murray Grime and uh, Dave Gentles. Everyone getting ready for a... Uh, a great match ahead, Paul. Oh, definitely. The excitement's building here. Thunder Six leading the teams out. Guard of Honour formed by some local junior clubs there. They'd be very excited, those kids, to be out on the, uh, on the Olympic pitch before this very, very important game. Just looking at the previous winners of this tournament. The Thunder Sticks previously won this competition on eight occasions. They've been runners-up five times. Before today, we've held this competition on 19 occasions. They've reached 13 of 19 gold medal games, which is an extraordinary achievement. But even better than that, your team, Aaron, the Queensland Blades, they've actually made 14 gold medal games for six victories and eight runners up. Uh, so, Queens have actually made every gold medal game since 2002. So, this is fifth place performance by them. Probably their worst performance performance since 97 when they also finished fifth. Anyway, game about to start. New South Wales with the ball and we're underway in the gold medal game the 2011 Australian Hockey League. New South Wales in attack early on. Yeah, like I said earlier, Paul, the, uh, the dominance from uh, WA seemed to uh, hold them in good stead in the final series they've played in so many now. It, uh, it definitely uh, holds them in good stead in the, in the finals. Yeah, obviously experience at this level is crucial. Um, I still think nerves are a big factor here. Every player must be a bit nervous, but the more times they've played at this level, the easier it becomes. Yeah, the first five, ten minutes of the match, they'll definitely be getting a feel for, for each other um, and, and playing those nerves out, Paul. OK, New South Wales ball here. In the left, they'll probably look to switch it out to the right side. It's a bad pocket to get stuck in there at the left. Here we go, over to the right side of the pitch. I just wonder, the, the game New South Wales played against uh, Queensland yesterday uh, has taken some of the legs out of their um, out of the New South Wales players. It was a pretty intense match. Well, they knew they had to win with a bonus point, Aaron. That's, uh, that was my concern that they'd be able to get themselves up again after such a great performance yesterday against the, uh, the Blades. Yeah. What an exciting game that was. Always good to see the Blades lose, Aaron, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I could see you were you were definitely suffering during that game yesterday. 
you know, it was interesting coaching tactics uh, yesterday to, to pull the goalkeeper off. Here we go here, attacking the 25, WA safe. But yeah, interesting coaching tactics yesterday to pull the goalkeeper off. Uh, 20 minutes to go to, to try and uh, score a victory against New South Wales. Well, given that both teams needed to win with a bonus point, I think at that point there was uh, Queensland were down 2-0, so coach Matt, well, Matt Wells knew that five goals needed to be scored, so it was a fairly bold tactic. Didn't pay off in the end. New South Wales winning that game 4-0, leapfrogging the Canberra Lakers to make it the gold medal game. There's another overhead there from uh, from the back there from the Thunder Six. Yeah, it's fairly addictive those overheads, aren't they, Aaron? You know, in modern game hockey, it uh, it definitely uh, it's uh, a skill that uh, they all use now. Well, it's often res results in a turnover. You go Simon Orchard with that unusual loping running style of his, very distinctive. Fantastic to watch, isn't he? It's amazing. Uh, he's very deceptive with his pace. So far, bring the ball out to the right. Doing Some the free hit there. there. Yeah. Another foot. Bring the free hit back out to the dots. That's for the new rules that were brought in a few years ago. But Arini earns another free hit. Of course, the ball must be touched or carried five yards before it enters the circle for any attacking free hit inside the 25. Brent Livermore there, guarding the ball. New South Wales are uh, obviously going around the play trying to find their best attacking options. And we have a 16. And they found the channel into the goal there, no one on the receiving end of that pass. And the six turn the ball over, Butterini now. Picked off easily there by the Thundersticks. But another sideline hit there for New South Wales. Well, it's a good sign for New South Wales to have uh, good possession in this first five minutes of the match. Yeah, Thunder Six haven't had much of the ball so far. Butterini here, into the 25. Another foot, free hit on the dotted line. Gee, an exciting player, isn't he, when he's got the ball? And he's had a couple of fantastic years, especially with the Kookaburras. Scored some great goals. Great tackle Play there. On. Good umpiring. Might take this opportunity now to mention one of our broadcast sponsors, FHE, the specialist in field hockey equipment with a huge range of top brands at low prices. Visit your closest FHE store today or shop online at fhe.com.au. All well, back to Brent Livermore. He's a, a definite player to watch in the finals. He uh, is obviously very um, experienced in this level, um, and uh, he's. Sorry, I want to have a look at this collision here. Matt Willis there. Just leaving his arm out a bit on the tackle. Free hit there for the Thundersticks. Yeah, a little bit careless, wasn't it? Yeah. So back to Brett Livermore. Look, definitely the most experienced player on the pitch. Uh, gold medalist with the Kookaburras in 04. He uh, certainly will be able to uh, calm the, the nerves of a lot of the younger players who will look to him for guidance if things get a little bit tough. Well, I guess they don't call him Chief for nothing. <laughs> That's right, the Chief. He's a very, very experienced. Currently residing on the Gold Coast. He's actually one of the only three Australians who have signed with the new World Series hockey that's going to be uh, commencing in India at the end of this year. It's kind of like a, a, an Indian Premier League cricket. Very exciting times for hockey. Still a few uh, kings to iron out with that. Well, he's definitely a great ambassador for the game. He certainly is. He's certainly achieved a lot. His experience is invaluable for the Waratahs, especially for such an important game. He's got Mark Patterson with the ball now, looking for a circle penetration. Oh, Butterini's in there. Oh, oh, what an amazing Butterini. goal! That seemed to come out of nowhere there. 
He's definitely a match turner. Those skills in the circle. Let's look at the replay here. He lost the ball there, but that, I think I think that's gone through the keeper's legs there, Aaron. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, definitely a, a bad sign for WA. Yeah, it certainly seemed quite easy there. It's probably very good for New South Wales to be playing this game from in front. They never really looked like troubling the war the uh, Thunder Sticks in the pool game earlier this week. So now the Thunder Sticks have to chase the game. Good position for the Waratahs to be in. Yeah, with with soft goals, it's in modern hockey. It's it's so hard now with the the easiness, I guess, from the the corners that uh, they go in. You don't want a field goal coming in soft. It's, uh, it's hard enough to defend corners, let alone a, a soft field goal. Yeah, definitely, as I said, seemed to come out of nowhere. Some good skills to get in the D. He lost the ball, but fought hard to get it back. Very quick shot. Keeper Clemens there. Just didn't seem to be ready. Waratah's back on attack. Look, it, it has been all Waratah so far since the start of this game. Now, I just I just hope they keep this attack up because they really need to push it to WA at this point in the game. WA are very strong in their, their defensive 25, so to see them make a slip up like that um, is very rare. No, they wouldn't be happy. Just coming up to the 10 minute mark now. That goal scored, just getting the details in from the tech bench. Scored in the seventh minute. Goal to Butterini. A oh, great running drag flick there from Brent Dancer. Livermore. <laughs> Brent Livermore, sorry. Two Brents on the field. One for each team. Oh, unfortunately, this trap. Just lost the handle on that there. Mark Boyne there. Sideline hit. Older brother of Craig. Oh, here we go. This is definitely what WA needs in the circle. Well, oh, great goalkeeping. McPherson there with the intercept. Just got that left glove down to stop that ball going through. Yeah, Trent Mitten was lurking there. Mitten scored some great goals already this tournament. He's so dangerous in that strike zone. Actually took out one of the umpires in one of the early games this week with a, a sliding goal. Took out uh, Ben De Young, the umpire. Thunder Six now enjoying a bit of possession. Into the D. Raised ball. Still hanging on. Hard one there. There you had uh, opportunity at the top of the circle there, but it's yeah, good interception there by Walk, who fed the ball out to young Adam Emer. It's his first year of AHL. I actually remember playing against Adam Emer in third grade a number of years ago. He would have been a 14-year-old. He ran past me quite a few occasions that I was day. Going to ask how you went there. Paul. I uh, yeah, definitely a case of him on the way up and me on the way down. But, uh, he plays for the Burwood Briars Club here in Sydney, not too far away, just down the road actually. And it was very clear at an early age he was going to be getting to these heights. He's definitely made an impact in uh, Sydney hockey, that's for sure. Definitely, he was a member of the Australian All Schools team in 2007. I was speaking with his cousin Rowan earlier. The uh, family very, very proud of him at this level. Great ball movement from WA here. They're controlling it um, back now. They've I think they're happy just to have a, a handle on the ball for a few passes. Here goes Mitten. Lost the handle on that 16. Mitten's had a fantastic tournament. Yeah, he's been talking of the town. Still quite young, only 20 years of age. It's the third year of AHL, so into the squad quite early. He's still a WA21's player when he made the AHL team. He's born now. WA enjoying some possession. 
Ball crashed into the D. Well intercepted there by the Waratahs. Comes Livermore. Tom Lobsey there. Oh, turnover. A turnover. Dangerous. Did good work coming out of 25. It, it's hard to see it go back into the 25. Nice ball into space. Oh, he's going to get it. He yes. gets it in. Well Great done. running. Butterini. Great athleticism. Seems we've gotten over those injury concerns from last year, Butterini. Kept him out of the national team for a while. New South Wales in the oh. circle again. Good to Looks like a corner. There. No danger to play on. Great in urgency circle. from New South Wales. Raise ball, surely. Uh, I think it was well brought down there. And the Thunder Sticks out of trouble for the time being. Nice searching ball there. Waratah still in possession in the 25. It's the younger of the Patterson. Livermore in the circle. Very dangerous from there. Very good tackle though. Waratah still in possession. Tristan White on the ball. Earns a free hit. Adam Ema on the over the free hit. It's good work there. Matthew Phillips with the pass back. Butterini. Just loses control. So when New South Wales being very impressive with their, their press in this first half, haven't they there? The three guys on one there. As I was saying earlier, it seems to be the, uh, the amazing fitness of all the players these days. There's no such thing as any half-court pressure anymore. It is full press all the time. I might mention now another one of our broadcast sponsors, Sportsink International. They provide tools for supporters from any country to all major hockey events around the world. If you're looking at travelling to the London Olympics in 2012, then Sportslink has a tour for you. Check out www.sportslinkinternational.com. Back to the action now. Thunder Six with the ball. That's a great transfer pass. It's a very basic skill in hockey, Aaron, to be able to hit that, those nice flat passes. Just really opens up the, uh, the the other side of the field for for, for attack. Yeah, it seems like an easy skill, but uh, obviously it uh, it takes some years of uh, practicing and get it that flat and hard. Over and over, these guys practice. Just from a coaching perspective, it's hard to get your players to to uh, to practice that that skill. It doesn't seem particularly interesting, but it is such an important skill to learn and, and everything about hockey is about execution and, and those basic skills if you can execute them well it really turns you into a an elite level player Josh White with a pass there another turnover in the 25 Oh, he just gets that. Good reach there. Here's a chance now for WA. Born with a shot. Oh, Save there. Wide. It's Craig Born with a shot. Well saved there by McPherson. Full press again. Dave Jennels hops out of the way there. Force a turnover. It's a benefit of the full court press. Brent Dance with a free hit. Kyle Brown in, in view there. 
Playing for WA, obviously a Toowoomba boy. That must hurt you to see Queenslander no longer wearing maroon. Unfortunately, there's been a few of them over the years. <laughs> <laughs> Very good player, Kyle. John Charlesworth over the ball. Earns a free hit. This is where WA is dangerous. They like to get on that back line and, and shoot the ball back to the top of the circle. They like to get behind WA, uh, New South Wales defence. Nice transfer of possession. Oh, this nice lost, trap. lost the handle on it there. White to take the free hit. Nice first time pass back in. Oh, scrambling. Let's check this replay here. Charlesworth with a touch pack there. Jake, uh, Alice there, Park, sorry, with the shot. Yes, if I was clear out with an overhead. Another counter attack from WA. We just lost the handle. But back, Charlesworth on the ball. A bit of a dispute there. Murray's having none of it today. Thunder six down. Now down the left side. Looks like they've got something going into Craig Boyne in the circle. That's a great pass. He's on the back oh, he's line. Oh, he's found the gap. Oh. He's found the gap inside the left post. That's a fantastic finish. Oh, awesome. Awesome to watch. Poor Dan McPherson was uh, wrong-footed there on the, on the baseline. It was a tough decision here. Do you cover the pass or cover the shot? He's left that left inside post open. And Craig Boyne with a fantastic finish there. Craig, the younger brother of Mark, currently in the National Development Squad. He'll be heading off to North America in September with the Combined Institute squads, the, the CISAS Tour it's called. A couple of his teammates will be joining him. Some of the Waratahs will be there as well. Okay, the goalkeeper Tristan Clemens and Aaron Zalewski from WA. From the Waratahs, Matt Willis, Tristan White, Josh Miller and Duncan Pierce will also be on that tour. The score now tied again. One each. About 15 minutes to go before half time. Been a fascinating game so far. It's always, it's always good to see the uh, the first two goals are a field goal to Paul instead of drag flicks. It, it uh, makes exciting hockey. That's right. Penalty corners have become a very uh, important part of the game. I always think that teams that can score field goals were always going to be the teams that can come away with a victory. Fergus Kavanagh, captain of the Thunder Six on the ball. That's a great transfer from the left cross to the right there. And through some traffic there, a bit of a turnover. South Wales just going around the back again. Great transfer. It is a good transfer. Ball out there to Phillips on the right uh, right flank. Just opens up the game and allows the team to hang on to possession a little bit longer and find those easier passes. Now back across to the left. Finding Orchard there. That's a great pass. Great cut out. I tell you what, Brent Dancer had to make that that uh, interception there. Ball across from Lobsey. He's let that it, play on. He was picked off there, but Patterson's got the ball back. Takes a quick free hit. Oh. I don't think that travelled the five yards there. And... 
back to the Thundersticks. Look at this press here. Well, the Waratahs, it's paid off. Ooh. Ooh. Could have been a great counter attack. Could, could have been one. dangerous there. <laughs> back to the Thundersticks now. Kavanaugh with a pass up. Finding Sampy, but just lost that. Just lost his grip on the ball there. Andy Phillips. Finds Livermore. Thundersticks managed to cut that off. Ball movement around the back. Looking for some openings. Ford's working hard there to, to keep that press up. Here we Have go. We and that's a nice interception there. A little more on the ball. Oh, unlucky ball. He's trying to find his forwards there for running lead. Under six again. A little more. Oh, again. Just a little bit too far out in front of his teammate there. And the Thundersticks, opportunity down the right flank here. Raised, Raised ball there from Zalewski. Another member of the CISAS tour. Back inside New South Wales. Last couple Ooh, of players. Butterini there. Ooh. Let's have a look at this again. I think he just went for a 50 50 ball. I've got a feeling he's just collected with a shoulder here. Yes. Oh. Yeah, they're always dangerous, Ooh. those ones. Ooh. Ooh. Just the way the knees crumbled underneath him there. Unfortunate I think, knock. I think he's seeing stars. He looks okay, thank God. Uh, I think we we'll just need to shake that out. Tough play, won't be long before he's back on. He's walked off. Waratah's back with the ball. Very ball back inside. A little more. Nice little touch pass there from Duncan Pierce. He's controlling his... that mid midfield well, isn't he? With all these years' experience. Athens oh, gold medalist. Nice it was a nice pass. Oh, and it's deflected back in. Oh, is that a corner? Yeah, yeah, it's a corner. Nice touch there. I think it was Lobsy deflecting the ball back towards the top of the D and it's found Brent Dancer's foot. Let's have a look here. Yes. Well, you take them when you get them, don't you? You do. I think, I think it looks... We could probably say it, it's lucky, but he definitely was aiming that deflection back towards the top of the D where... All of his teammates were lurking. He's picked up Brent Dancer's foot. So let's have a look here in the corner. What can the Waratahs do with this opportunity? Apparently through the competition, Paul, they've been trying to get the corners uh, down to 45 seconds, is what the umpires have been told. Well, with all the protective equipment they've got to put on, uh, we've seen in the last couple of years that sometimes have been quite long but 45 seconds seems to be the the guidance that the umpires have been given let's have a look here oh they've oh, gone oh dear they've gone the layoff there and it looked like no one was ready for it a lot of space out there wasn't there in a gold medal game you don't want to be wasting opportunities like that especially coming off from a uh, such a an easy corner that's right as you were saying they're, they're some of those are lucky corners it comes down to those uh, executions, don't they? That's right. Waratahs with the ball around the back. Looking for a through ball. Matt Walk there. Nice slap hit. Oh! Got through Got through tough tackle. That. Waratahs. On the edge of the circle. Must have hit a foot there. Under six with the ball. Matt Walk we saw there earlier from the Glebe Club in Sydney. And obviously the Walk family 
synonymous with elite level hockey in Sydney. Ken Walk playing many years as a key defender for Australia and the Walk family very well known through Sydney hockey in particular with the Glebe Hockey Club. Matt one of three Glebe players playing for the Waratahs to, together with the Patterson brothers. Yeah, Ken definitely being one of the living legends in hockey. He is. There's Matt Walk again. Willis there turning the ball over back to the Thundersticks. Seemed a bit isolated there. But works hard. Look, that's very important skill for people or, or effort there from, from Willis. Under pressure. Was forced into a turnover but worked very hard to break the play down to try and get the ball back. The Thunder Six here. You get ball in the circle. Nice interception. Ooh, oh, second wow. save. Great, Great save. Great save. He did well. The person to intercept the pass. But here's a quick break here from Orchard. So like they're dangerous oh, no, in New South Wales. Oh, he's got it back here too. Here they go. Into attack. He's over the 25. Into the circle. Oh, and that's it's a that's foot there. Corner. Brian will call the foot. Great play. That was in a very, very effective transfer and into attack here. Orchard really doing well down the left side. Let's look at the Great replay. by Dan, two in a row. And Orchard across the 25. Nice pass there. Duncan Pierce finding the foot. It's when New South Wales have been dangerous all week, haven't they? Their counter attacks. Just that pace. Orchard doesn't look as quick as he actually is. It's phenomenal, it's isn't it? It's a loping, loping run. And very deceptive when he uh, comes to pass the ball there. Found Pierce unmarked. No opportunity for a clean shot. Found the foot and a corner. Impressive first and second save from Daniel McPherson as well. Oh, allowed New South Wales to get up the end of the pitch. Push out here from Ema. Oh, it's gone in! Oh, Pierce! Wow, what a great Duncan flick. Pierce! The right side of the goal here. New South Wales have not been that effective with their corners all tournament, but Duncan Pierce has found it. Looked like he took a bit of deflection here, too, Aaron. Let's have a look at the replay. The hardest place to save a goal, Paul, between the, the postman. And oh, the it's goalkeeper. come off. I think there it's come off Brent Dancer's foot. Goalkeeper Clemens had it covered, but took that deflection off Brent Dancer's foot into the goal. New South Wales now leading 2 1. Dangerous period here for WA. They shore up their defence a little bit here. Just Can about I think Kyle Brown. Just about five minutes going through to half time here. Blues, uh, Waratah's back on, a, on the attack. Nice through ball. Here we go. Oh, that's a good tackle. Impressive back stick jink there. Captain Kavanagh there. Searching ball. Pick up there from Livermore. Great through ball. Waratahs have the ball back. Oh, that's a good steal there. Orchard back on the ball here. Great control. In the 25. Mark Patterson with the ball. Back to Orchard. Oh, found Butterini. Found a foot in the he circle. Flex it back onto the foot. That's good play. Mark Patterson involved there from the Glebe Club. The younger brother Ian also playing. Very well worked there. So important to find a corner so so soon after the last goal. And in, in the last five minutes here too. You said I would love to get to the break. Three one up. Oh, well read. Well read there. Back to the. Injector there, Patterson. Long corner here to New South Wales. Just took a foot. Just took a touch there. 
Yeah, ball hadn't travelled five. Might take this opportunity to mention another one of our broadcast sponsors, Charter Group Finance. They specialise in all types of home and commercial loans. They're your one-stop shop for any scenario, whether you're in need to refinance your existing loan, source a new loan, or access the equity in your property for a new purchase. To arrange an obligation-free consultation, visit their website, www.chartergroupfinance.com.au. I'm going to go back there. Some good skill there from Boyce. Yeah. The ball there for Kyle Brown. Free hit. Just looking around. It's a 16. And you'll mm. note, uh, Aaron, the Thunder Six wearing black armbands today. Yeah. Kyle Brown's grandfather passed away overnight. Leon Giltro from Toowoomba. And many hockey fans and coaches around the country will have heard of that name bit of a legend of uh, the Toowoomba hockey scene and author of probably the most famous hockey coaching manual in Australia. From coach to coach, our sympathies and thoughts go to the family and a great mark of respect there from the Thundersticks for the passing of Leon Giltro. WA got a bit of possession back here and... Uh, I'm sure they'll be looking for the equaliser. This close to half time. That ball didn't travel five. Played in there by goal scorer Craig Boyne. Craig, another member of the National Development Squad, and will be travelling to North America with the CISAS squad in September. Be great for those academy players to, to get a chance to go on that tour. I think just the whole concept of being overseas representing the, the country is a fantastic experience for these guys. And obviously quite a few injuries in the, in the national squad at the moment, giving opportunity to some of these uh, younger players, academy players and members of the development squad. There yeah, hasn't been there. There's been a lot of injuries in the, in the last six months, hasn't there? There has, and there's been some, some players earned their national debuts in the uh, the recent European European tour for the Kookaburras. Pretty sure some of the Queensland Blades uh, players were uh, the debutants um, with the amount of injuries they've had this season uh, took their, their opportunity this, this tournament. Well as we mentioned uh, at the start of the game Aaron probably one of the uh, well the, the equal worst performance for the Blades in uh, AHL and NHL history and certainly the, the number of injuries to key players such as Mark Knowles, Jamie Dwyer, the current Hammond, uh, yeah. Robbie Hammond, you know, the, especially Jamie Dwyer, the, the current World Hockey Player of the Year missing this tournament and uh, resulting in them finishing fifth. Well, there's half time, New South Wales will be very happy with their performance Aaron, 2-1 up. There's certainly, I would say, there's certainly been the, uh, the strong of the two teams, possession-wise, probably just shading the Thundersticks. Yeah, definitely controlled the match. I'm here in the gold medal match between the New South Wales Waratahs the smoke-free Western Australian Thundersticks. New South Wales leading two goals to one. Very tight game. The Waratahs just with a tight lead over the Thundersticks. Aaron, let's have a look at some of the action from the first half. Bartarini's goal. Oh, exceptional skill, wasn't it? He just, I think the fact that he just lost possession here probably had the goalkeeper off guard, but he's got it back and he did manage to get that through the keeper's legs. Mm. 
after being dis dispossessed there and, and just regathering that ball to strike through. And the Boyne goal here. Again, the goalkeeper probably could have done better. Cheeky little goal, wasn't it? It is a cheeky goal. As we mentioned earlier, the it's always hard to try and pick the, the pass back across and found that space there. The, th the third goal, being the second goal for the Waratahs, came from this penalty corner. A quick break there from Simon Orchard after two fantastic saves from McPherson. Duncan yeah. Pearce earned the corner and did everything himself here from the corner. Yeah, it definitely looks like it's come off the shin there, doesn't it? That's right, that's right. Keeper Clemens was behind it, but just came off the right leg there of Brent Dancer. Taking it in, giving New South Wales the lead at 2-1. Let's have a look at some of the stats at halftime. Interestingly there, Aaron, no corners at this stage for West Australia. They're very lethal from their corner. They've got two drag click options being Sam Pike and Brent Dancer. Mm. Moratars have done very well to stop them getting any corners at all. Well, the circle penetrations that uh, WA are getting, they're, they're taking their opportunities with four over the, the top of uh, levels, 11 circle penetrations from New South Wales with only two field shots. So WA are getting their shots away. That's right. And also testament to the <coughs> WA deep defence, managing to pick off the... Waratah's uh, attacks when they get into the D there prior to any shots going. Interesting to note there's no uh, penalty cards this, this half. It's both umpires have controlled the match pretty well actually. That's right. I mean the the new rules regarding green cards, we've seen a lot of green cards this week in the tournament. Uh, but both teams' discipline has been uh, exceptional and I'm sure both coaches will be very happy with that. Thank you to our broadcast sponsors, Sportslink International, Charter Group Finance, and FHE Field Hockey Equipment. Hockey Australia and Living Sport Media, proud to be bringing you this Australian Hockey League final for 2011. Second half about to be underway here Sydney Olympic Park, Waratahs leading 2-1 at half time. Waratahs with the ball, Kyle Brown. I guess at half time both coaches uh, would have been um, pretty happy with both teams performances. I guess WA uh, needing to attack a little bit more and hold possession. Um, but, um, New South Wales, Larry will be definitely um, happy with the execution some of the, the players have been carrying out. Oh, I think definitely, Aaron. I mean, after they uh, lost the, the pool game earlier this week. Corner to WA here. It's, uh, look, this is the first corner of the game. So the uh, quick free hit and earning the corner there just inside the D. Larry looking pretty nervous. And McIntosh. Okay, there's Charlesworth with a push out. Goes to Sam Pike. Yeah. Goal! Fantastic. That's, the, that's the type of start to the second half that they would have been chasing. Sam Pike there. Pike, one of the two corner specialists with the Thundersticks. Again, what a hard area to stop for a goalkeeper. In between the, the corner post wow. and the goalkeeper, it's, uh, it's definitely the hardest spot. That's great execution of that corner at that point from Pike. Now, Pike scored three goals in the last game against uh, the Victorian Vikings that earned the Thunder Six their place in this game. When we spoke with, with the coach earlier, he was uh, telling us that The drag flicker who has uh, been scoring the goals keeps going with the uh, with the corners until he misses, and then he changes over to Brent Dancer. So 
If there's another corner here for the Thunder Six, you'd imagine Sam Pike would take it. Yeah, Chris must have definitely said some words at half time to make WA come out and fire off a goal straight away. Well, it's, uh, as I said, the first corner and uh, they're basically one for one this half. Great little skills there. Yeah, Brent Dancer is forced the foot there. Doing his cabin over the ball. Nice calm defence there from the Waratahs. Back to 2 2. Probably the perfect start of the second half for the Thundersticks. Scoring in the first minute. Allowing the five meters there. That's a danger with those overheads. They invariably end up with turnovers. In there. Goal scorer Pike over the free hit. Steps away. Waratah's working out from defence. And one of our broadcast sponsors, FHE, specialist in field hockey equipment, huge range of top brands at low prices. You can visit your FHE store or shop online at fhe.com.au. New South Wales looking to, to build it back up again. And I've uh, found a foot somewhere in there, I think. Murray controlling the game there. He's never far from the action, is he? <laughs> Clash of sticks. So fast this game now with that, that uh, rolling ball on the uh, free hits. Yes, the self-pass rule. Certainly... In defence, all teams need to be aware of that quick free hit. Yeah, it's definitely changed the uh, the face of international and top level hockey. They're searching over hit pass there, but again results in a turnover. Andrew Jacobs there made his debut for WA back in 06. Been out of the squad for a few years. Back in again this year. Kevin there just worked the ball back. Great three ball. Yeah, with the London London Olympics one year away, Paul, it's uh, uh, very exciting for some of these younger players coming through, getting a glimpse at that uh, Olympic dream. Well, I think with the number of injuries in the Kookaburras at the moment, it's certainly opened a few doors. Kookaburras coach Rick Charlesworth will be certainly assessing every uh, every player's, I guess, understudy in every position. And the amount of training they will go through leading into London. Uh, we've seen in the past in a lot of, uh, a lot of Olympic Games... Uh, lead ups you get players injured at the last moment. Oh back into the twenty-five. Free to Thunder Six here. Yeah, so I think some of these younger players <coughs> maybe on the fringe there's a lot for them to play for here. Given some of the injuries at the, the top level. Brent Dancer here. Again the press. Yeah, in the first half, it looked like a bit of, oh, here we go, Brent again. Always dangerous outside the 25. This is where WA seemed very strong in their defence. They seem to be very composed. Good numbers around the ball. Nice little jink there, though. Just saw a couple of players there just outside the D, and of course, to 
some of the young players at home, you want to make sure you're outside the D when you're looking to defend. Just two balls on the pitch there. Umpire Dave Gentles just slowing proceedings down. One of the top umpires in the world, David Gentles. Australia's very happy to have him. Very lucky to have him, I should say. Umpired the 2008 Beijing Olympic gold medal match between Germany and Spain. You're not real happy. <laughs> Larry is uh, turn over at the halfway. He's, he's not. He's not ever very happy, is he, Larry? John O'Charlesworth on the ball here. Interesting uh, piece of trivia here. Aaron, John O'Charlesworth, one of four Thunder Six players who has a father who is an Olympian. Obviously, Rick Charlesworth, but also in the squad, you've got Brent Dancer, whose father, Barry, was a member of the 76 Olympic squad, the silver medalist and coach of the Kookaburras in 04 when they won the gold medal. But also, Trent oh. Mitten. Sorry there, Paul. Uh. Corner here to Thunder Six. Just to, just to finish off that bit of trivia there, Trent Mitten and Matthew Boyce also have fathers who played for the Kookaburras in the 84 Olympics. Grant Mitten and Grant Boyce. Thunder Six with their second corner of the game. We'll see who uh, will line up to take this. Two batteries again. Oh, nice and save. Saved, but dangerously deflected upwards. Trent Mitten there did his best to make it look dangerous. And in another corner there. Yeah, a bit of a standard save, I, I guess, there from Daniel. So interesting here, Brent dances on. Sam Pike must be on the bench at the moment. Otherwise, it would be Sam Pike looking to repeat his performance a few moments ago. I'm sure this will go to Brent Dancer. Might be looking for the low flick here. And it's gone oh. through! Thunder Six take the lead. Early in the second half. Again from a uh, penalty corner. Brent Dancer here. He's kept it low. He's gone down the middle. Aaron as a goalkeeper. What have you got to say about this? The low ones in those positions are Again, so hard to pick up, especially when you've got uh, a runner in front of you. But um, yeah, it's just uh, the modern game of hockey, I guess, Paul. Now it's uh, you save the ones you can, and the ones that uh, are 50 50 are 50 50. <laughs> well, it's allowed the Thunder Six to take the lead here. Just 11 minutes into the second half, first time in the game that the Waratahs have been behind. And so far this half, you've got to say the Thunder Sticks have definitely stepped up. Now hold on to this league. Three goals to two. And as we've seen all week, Aaron, lots of goals scored in every game. Well, I didn't see that coming after uh, the first half. I mean, uh, having New South Wales dominate uh, that... A majority of that first half to, to see WA come back so soon um, definitely pull on the on the corners it's uh, it makes a massive difference isn't it having those two corner drag flickers in uh, Pike and Dancer it goes to show how important it is to not concede corners Waratahs didn't concede any in the first half and you can see two uh, two or three in the second half and find themselves behind Matt Phillips there Looks for the pass back, hasn't been handled well. And it'll be a long corner to the Thundersticks. Doesn't seem to be New South Wales panicking too much. Well, they just got to hold that composure that they showed in the first half. They don't want to be conceding another goal here. Two goals in six minutes. Stick check there. Good transfer. Here come the Thunder Six again into the circle. Oh, another 
Oh, no. No, it's 16. 16. Here. I don't think they needed to rush that 16-yard uh, hit there. I think the Waratahs need to compose themselves. It certainly seems they've uh, really panicked a little bit since the start of the second half, which they didn't need to do, and now they find themselves behind. In pass in field. Oh, that's a fantastic pass. First time shot. Oh, Great save. Yeah, he did get a touch on that. Got a touch. Just covered, the, covered that near post there. Point now works the ball. The attacking. Yeah, that was um, half. definitely New South Wales hit there. That left side of WA seems to be giving New South Wales a bit of grief defensively. Uh, definitely making a lot of yardage into attack. And a quick turnover. Good numbers from New South Wales defensively. Good pressure there. Rotars with the ball back. Tackle Butterini. Go to one. Just trying to trying to push that pass a little bit too early there. Thunder six in a circle. Yes. Good tackle there. They've looked so dangerous there on the back line, WA. Yeah, Tristan White did well to pick that off there. And the Waratah straight back into the circle. Oof. Just couldn't get the handle on it. Great transition into attack by New South Wales. They've earned the long corner. Mark Patterson. There's two balls on the pitch there. Oh, he's lost the handle on that. Just rushed himself. Sometimes this happens in finals hockey. Yeah. It's the first time the Waratahs have been behind all game, Aaron. I think uh, just panicking. Here we go again. Just seem to try to be pushing it a little bit too too much at the moment, don't they? Still a long time to go in this half, so there's no requirement for them to do anything like that. Dangerous Ooh, pass. Well read there. Oh, we just couldn't control the ball first touch. Yeah, to mention our broadcast sponsor again, Sports Inc International, providing tours for supporters from any country to all major hockey events around the world. If you're looking to attend the London Olympics in 2012, Sports Link has a tour for you. Check out www.sportslinkinternational.com. Rotars with the ball again. Nice pass back there to Josh Miller. Yeah, they're starting to look a little bit more composed again. Oh, unlucky. The longer this half goes on, the Waratahs will feel pressured to get back on the scoreboard. Which could present some opportunities for the Thundersticks on counter-attack. They really do use the uh, the width well, don't they, WA? Haven't seen a lot of uh, balls through the centre for WA. Well, now being ahead, they're in the box seat. Don't need to push any passes. Hold position. Again, uh, a bit of meterage had from a, an overhead. Ooh, pressure in the circle there. That's a quick release at the right side of New South Wales. 
Intercept. Counter attack. WA. Good running off the ball. Defend on the ball. Oh, jeez. Oh, two players there. Just needed a touch. Just replay. That's a great pass infield. Alistair Park just went down a bit early. And uh, just missed his sick onto his feet. Waratah's back into attack straight away. Great ball through. Lynching pass. Vander there, all the experience. Makes some time for himself just to relieve the pressure. That's all the fun of six need to do here. Let's keep the ball away from their own defensive 30 yard area. Tristan right there. It's a good play. Through ball. Oh. Some brave defending. <laughs> brave defending there. Yeah, it's never easy coming in to uh, tackle that on a, on someone's back stick, is it? It's often the case: the closer you get, the less chance you're going to get hit. True. Thunder six now with an opportunity. Touch there from the Waratahs, long corner. Great off the ball running there from WA. So the urgency comes into it. Kavanagh again. Looking for a play at the top of the circle there, well read by the Waratahs. Leaves the pressure. That's a searching ball to Charlesworth there. Oh! Ball goes. A bobbling pass there. If it had made contact with the attacker, it would have been a fantastic opportunity for WA to extend this lead. Certainly possession this half so far in favour of the Thundersticks. Butterini now. Can we see another piece of magic from him this half after that great goal he scored early in the game? And the wasted opportunity there from the Waratahs. Great play though, is a good ball movement. The longer this goes, they can't score, the more panic they will become. Cancer now with the overhead. Nice check there from John and Charlesworth. Around the back. Around. Mention again one of our sponsors, Charter Group Finance. In a one stop shop for any home loan scenario, whether you're looking to refinance your existing loan, source a new home loan, or access the equity in your property, visit www chartergroupfinance.com.au and you can arrange an obligation free consultation. Back to the action here. The pace of the game slowed up a little bit in the last few minutes. Well, well the Thunder Six certainly don't need to keep their foot on the accelerator at all, holding on to this lead. Waratah's now with an opportunity. Here just outside. Again, you see the importance of stepping outside the circle to make a tackle there. Patterson makes the pass. Waratah's content to throw the ball around the back. Through the back line. A searching run there from White. Great work from New South Wales. Yeah. Again, Tristan. Good defence by the Thunder Six. Numbers around the ball. Waratah's back in though. Oh, that's some clever play. 
Beautiful one, hockey. One little touch opens it up. Thunder six back into attack. Here comes Mitten now. Turns, Turns back in the four has six a shot oh. just wide. Great transition there. Let's have a look here at the replay. Back onto his four stick. And it's about a metre wide there. Great opportunity for Thunder Sticks. Good end to end hockey. Well, they spent a good couple of minutes there in defence, but managed to get the ball up the other end for a, a free uh, a shot on goal. Butterini here against Cavana. Trying to call for the hit. Oh. His teammates slipped <laughs> over there. Good ice hockey. There was a sniper in the grandstand. <laughs> Never more. Haven't seen much of him in this second half, Brent. Well, but they need, they really need to be uh, looking to him for guidance here. Not long to go now. In the final 15 minutes of this half, they'll be looking for Livermore's experience to help them meet, get back level pegging in this game. Patterson there. Great vision off the ball there. Very good pass there. Butterini just bumped off the ball. Charlesworth, uh, Patterson works back well. Yeah. Great play there, McGlead midfielder. Lobsy now. Great build up. Crack the ball in the circle, no one there for it. There could, have, could have used a bit more patience there, I think. Yeah, they've got to start getting those percentage balls up, especially in the second half. They're definitely going to be under scoreboard pressure now. They'll be looking up at that scoreboard. They're running towards the scoreboard end. They'll see the time ticking away. And they'll realise they need to score. Great tackle, Brent. It was a great tackle there. Josh Miller with a quick free hit. Pass in field. Waratahs. Definitely that, a corner. That was off yes. a foot there. Well worked. Quick transitional play. Patterson accepting the high fives from his teammates. What can they do here from this corner? Again, the quick one-two passes uh, in the in the attacking 25 here is uh, like the first half. Put put WA in a scrambling defence. It's the first corner of this half for the Waratahs. Dave Generals taking control of the defenders. What can the Waratahs do here? Ooh, come off the WA stick. It was a direct push here. Let's have a look. Fantastic footage here from the Zingol camera. Oh, just took a deflection there from the Thunder Sticks. Josh Miller was there ready for the deflection. Another long corner here. Three hit on the dotted line. Probably looking to work some set plays here. Oh, I found go. a foot. I found another foot. Can they do better with this corner? Most of the corners have come from uh, uh, finding the, the odd foot in the circle, hasn't it? It's just these quick passes in. Defender's just not ready. Comes Patterson with a push out again. And again. And work the same variation there. Ooh. And just went wide. Awesome to watch, isn't it? It's a great <laughs> angle. Nothing I've ever seen before, Aaron. I'm sure you've seen that angle many times. The guts, uh, the, the first runner uh, takes to get out there and, and wear one for his team is, uh, from a goalkeeper's point of view, is uh, pretty impressive to see. That's why I used to always hit back to halfway. Here comes <laughs> Patterson here now. Gets a shot Ooh. away. And a corner. Dangerous off the keeper there. Gentles played advantage. There's a shot. And the keeper. Patterson did uh, his best to show that he was in danger from the rebound. There you go. 
Finland's had to make that save. Another corner for the Waratahs. Can they make this one count? Oh, fantastic corner from the Waratahs. Fantastic, phenomenal. Patterson's play. taken the deflection there. Six minutes to go, Waratahs have equalised. It's 3-3 in this gold medal game. Oh, that's a great angle. Look at that. Patterson, nice down low, deflects into the goal. 3 all. Finals that don't get any more exciting than this, we do are, they? We're <laughs> in for a grandstand finish here. You can tell by the crowd's reaction, it's getting to the nitty gritty. This has been a spectacular gold medal game and a fitting end to a fantastic week of hockey. Oh, great skills there from Kyle. Both teams will be looking now for another corner. The Waratahs have worked very hard to get back into this game. They won't want to throw it away with any silly errors. Having said that, easy turnover. Phillips there with the interception. Waratah's free hit. Great defence. This game could go either way, Aaron. I'm not sure Whoa. who we're going to be able to pick here. And a tremendous fight back from the Waratahs. Having been ahead at half time, letting the lead slip. Back to 3 3. Here goes Josh Miller. Composure there from the Thundersticks defence. Very important to hold the ball in this uh, this period of play. Well, what would you do here, Aaron? Would you be looking for for the winning goal, or would you be uh, you know, with five minutes to go to half to full time? Would you be thinking about extra time? I'll be pushing the goal for for sure. I mean, that's uh, New South Wales uh, way. Um, definitely to, to be looking for the, the next uh, minute or two to, to be really pushing WA's defence. You just don't want to leave your defence exposed to uh, a quick break. And certainly with a penalty corner firepower, the Thunder 6 possess, you don't want to be giving away any penalty corners. The pressure relieving ball there from the Thunder Sticks. Press on New South Wales here, try and earn a turnover. There it is. Yeah, communication is very vital in these uh, final moments of the match, especially when the pressure's on three all. Where would you prefer to be now, Aaron? Out in the pitch or on the bench? <laughs> Definitely out in the pitch. The nerves will be getting everyone on both teams. Around four minutes left to play. Thundersticks with a long corner. Oh, Charlesworth throws a pass back. Patterson with the sideline hit here. Orchard. Oh, he's gone for the overhead there. And we're in a very dangerous position, mitten over the over the ball now. Thunder Six will be working the Way ball. Open. Oh, unmarked here, and he's found the foot. Wow. We were just talking about penalty corners, and you don't want to be giving the Thunder Six an opportunity. There's two minutes, less than two minutes on the clock here, Aaron. To leave someone unmarked like that. So who takes this corner now? Brent Dancer scored the last one. Would it be Dancer or Pike? It's gone to the Pike battery. Whoa. He scores! He scores! Pike! Amazing Pike puts his team flick. ahead with a minute to go on the clock. Amazing flick. That's one of the best, best executed corner drag flicks we've seen all tournament. Most keepers wouldn't expect it to be going there. It's such a high risk drag flick going that spot for a minute to go. That was just the most exquisitely taken penalty corner with a minute to go. And he stepped up to take this and more, most likely has won this game for the Thundersticks. Waratahs, less than a minute to go. Can they get an equaliser? 
I need to throw everything at him now. Boyne there makes an intercept. Everyone's forward now. Everyone's forward for the for the Waratahs. Here they go. That drag flick was just so fast. <laughs> Had some pace on it, Paul. That, that was an amazingly well executed drag flick. Wow, what can you say? Thunder six now with the ball. They're just going to wind the clock down. This was just an amazing finish to an amazing game. Very high quality. Waratahs worked so hard to get back into the game. And here we go. And yeah. full time, full time, the smoke free Western Australian Thundersticks, AHL champions for 2011. It's gone right down to the wire. But Samuel Pike, with his 11th goal of the tournament, makes him the equal top goal scorer has put away one of the most exquisitely taken, well-executed drag flicks to win the gold medal for the West Australian Thundersticks. What a heartbreak for New South Wales. Oh, you can tell they're dejected out there, Aaron. Mm. They've worked so hard to get back into the game. Let's have a look here. Here are the replays of all the goals from the second half. This just in the second minute. Sam Pike. Made it two all here. Just two minutes into the second half. Another replay here. Just to the kit, low to the keepers left. Great angle from here. Again, he had his targets on today, didn't he? Josh White, not much chance here. And then Brett Dancer with the second corner they had here. It was well saved, but dangerously up. Earned another corner. And then no. he went, this time he went low and straight. The keepers yeah, these days, they're not expecting those. Caught him off guard there for sure. And this took the Thundersticks into the lead. McPherson, yeah. you'll feel for McPherson there. And here's where New South Wales made it back to free all. <laughs> Amazing variation. This was, was a great. And, and it takes a lot of bravery here from Patterson to slide into two defenders. Eyes only for the ball. Definitely. No concern. For his own safety here, Got, gets the touch, makes it three or six to go, and then this again. <laughs> you to win watch, the match, Paul. To you can win watch the match. a lot of drag flicks and you will never see them at this critical junction of a game executed so perfectly. Do watch you, this. Do you wow. really blame Phillips for talking oh, look, about look, that All one. six foot four of Matt Phillips there. I tell you, if I was wearing those those bomb suits from the Hurt Locker, I'd still be ducking. <laughs> That was an absolute missile, and he could not have placed it any better. Here are the full-time stats now. Very, very even stats. Probably the most important feature here of these stats, Western Australia scoring th from three of their four penalty corners, all in the second half. New South Wales converting just two of their six penalty corners. The goal scorers there. Just a remarkable game. Let's see now. We had a chat with Fergus Kavanagh after the game, and we'll get his thoughts. Fergus, congrats on the victory. Must feel great to rush back from your brother's wedding overseas three days ago to win the AHL final. Yeah, it's all um, all happened very quickly. I wasn't sure the boys were going very very well, so I wasn't sure if they'd let me back in the team, to be honest. But uh, no, two two games and um, to win was made the wedding, I suppose, even better. And what was the game plan going into the final today? Well, we, we kept it very um, simple. We've sort of had the same game plan throughout the tournament. Um, New South Wales, we knew were very strong, very strong in the midfield. So we planned to shut them, try and shut them down in the midfield and, and really press their back group. So we had a really strong emphasis about attacking and really having to go at their back group and any opportunity to try and go forward and, and score. And the team's been very strong with penalty corners right through the tournament. Whose call was it uh, with that last corner with two minutes to go on who would actually take between Sam Pike and Brent Dancer? It was a decision in the huddle, and I think actually Brett Dancer probably told told Sam Pike to um, to take the flick. He's been flicking very well, obviously throughout the tournament, the highest goal scorer, and down sort of at the um, at the crunch time, Brett told told Sam to to take it and thankfully put it in. And is it time now to celebrate, or is there uh, some more work, hard work back home? No, definitely time to celebrate. The boys were um, ecstatic down in the change rooms. We've won three out of four in the last four years. Um, 
and with a couple of big names out. So it's it's very pleasing for WA hockey, and the boys will celebrate very hard. I um, I assume, but then we're back to club hockey next weekend in Perth. So a week of partying, then back to business. Congratulations and uh, on your third win. Cheers. Thanks. And congratulations to the Tassie Tigers, winners of the Play the Whistle Award for the 2011 AHL season. And the top goal scorers, a three-way tie with 11 goals each. We're out to Hermkins from the Canberra Lakers. Samuel Pike getting to 11 goals with that last-minute drag flick. And Matt Butterini from the New South Wales Waratahs. The player of the final. It was a pretty easy decision there for the judges. Samuel Pike from the WA Thundersticks. And the player of the tournament. Eddie Ockenden, one of the current stars of Australian hockey, representing the Tassie Tigers. We were lucky enough to have a few words with the current Australian Cougarborough's coach, Rick Charlesworth, to see what he thought about this fantastic game and the tournament here in Sydney for this week. Rick, have you been pleased with the standard on display at this week's tournament? Well, uh, I think that over the whole period, uh, we've seen it uh, develop and improve. When you get to the pointy end of the tournament, invariably the teams are at their sharpest. And so the games that we've seen uh, Friday and Saturday have been uh, particularly good. I think that uh, um, I, overall I'd say, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty pleased. I, th I know there's a lot of uh, talented players. Anybody who plays in this competition is a quality hockey player. And... Uh, I think there's uh, there's always some interesting new ones developing, and and uh, ov overall we had a very good final today. I thought uh, it was a quality match. With the Olympics just a year away, was this the last opportunity for any new players to be added to your squad? Well, I think we're constantly looking, but f after this tournament, we've got a group of players going off to Vancouver for a competition, and uh, we've got Australia A matches in a, in in Perth against India, Pakistan and New Zealand, so uh, that's in October. Um, we've got a continuing training environment occurring and uh, so there's a range of players that we're looking at. There will be some uh, who perhaps uh, are invited into the development squad, uh, but really between now and uh, the end of the year we've got, a, we've got a fair few opportunities still for people to show what they can do. And even next year, once we select a squad, we're looking at having a supplementary squad around our Olympic group. We have to play lots of practice matches and training uh, during next year. And so, uh, you know, there are opportunities uh, all the way through. Uh, and it's not until, I think, June next year that we'll finalise our Olympic team. Results from the recent European tour were a bit below expectations. What did you put that down to? Oh, I think the other teams are good and perhaps you can get ahead of yourself and people, last year we went through the Champions Trophy, trophy unscathed but I thought we were a bit lucky in a few matches. Sometimes they can go for you or against you and, and this year we, uh, we got found out a few times. That's a good thing, we needed that and I think we also need uh, to recognise that there's a whole range of things that we have to do to tighten up our game, to make it watertight and to improve the quality and consistency of it. So. Our European tour was a good reminder of exactly how good the other teams are and where we're at. Any team in the top ten can beat you and if you, uh, on any day, aren't, aren't at your best, you'll find out, you'll be found out. And finally, Rick, the Olympic final, just on 363 days away, are your preparations on track? Well, I think they're on the way, but th there's so many details to put together. And uh, I'm not really looking at the Olympic final. I want to be involved in the main games, but we've got a qualifier for the Olympics coming up in October. Then we have to uh, play uh, further competition and refine our squad. Then we have to go through all of the preparations next year with a test event and a whole range of things until we get to June. Once we get to June and we finally get a group, then we've got a, a month and a half of training until we uh, start playing at the Olympics. You're talking July 27 or something like that, or Ju opening ceremony July 27, you're talking first match 30th of July. We've got to get through those games to get to the main games at the end of it at the Olympics, and so I'm not focused on them, I'm focused on each step along the way. So there you have it for 2011, the smoke-free West Australian Thundersticks champions again. It's their ninth victory in the 19-year history of the Australian Hockey League. We've had an amazing tournament here this week. 
Aaron, any closing comments from yourself? Yeah, I just really enjoyed the final series. All teams were very close to making the final, especially ACT. Um, but uh, yeah, I just think uh, the the whole atmosphere uh, added to this excitement of the final today. And you couldn't have imagined a closer finish with Samuel Pike slotting away one of the most perfectly executed penalty corners you could imagine under pressure to win the gold medal for his team. They'll be celebrating long and hard in West Australia tonight. Well done to the Thundersticks. Commiserations to the Waratahs, but still a great effort to finish second. And that concludes our time here at the Australian Hockey League for 2011. Thank you to Hockey New South Wales and to Hockey Australia for their assistance in this broadcast. Well done to all the participating teams, the umpires, the officials, the ball kids. It's been a very long week here, but we've certainly enjoyed every second of the hockey action. On behalf of Living Sport Media, we thank you for your attention. We hope you enjoyed the action, and we'll see you again in 2012.